my lovelies and welcome to another video on my channel. Thank you very much for joining me today as always. Today's video is going to be about how I shape and file my nails. So I had a request from the lovely Argella. I sincerely apologise if I have mispronounced your name lovely, I'm very sorry. Um, but the question was about filing and shaping, specifically with an e-file, but I personally don't shape my nails with an e-file. I love my e-file, don't get me wrong, and it is, I could, it is a tool I could not live without. But it is a little bit of a blunt instrument, and I find that when I'm shaping my nails, I want something that gives me a little bit more precision, uh, probably slightly less, yeah, just a bit less of a blunt instrument, if you like. So, I'm not sure what that is, sorry for that. So, I actually file using a 180 grit file. I wouldn't use anything more coarse than that if you are working on your natural nails. So I've got that and I've also got my buffer which I use just to get rid of any of those little bits of scrapings you know that you get when you file your nails you get those little flaky bits so that's the last thing we're going to use I'm just going to put that to the side and I just wanted to show you how I shape my nails. So the question was specifically with a rounded shape and so that's what we're going to do that is generally what I do with my nails anyway so to me, when you're shaping your natural nails, if you've got extensions, you can shape however you like, you can go for your life. When you've got natural nails, um, and yes, I do have a gel overlay on this, but as you can see, these are my natural nails, and I only ever file when I still have product on my nails. I have very weak, bendy nails, so that's a tip in itself. If you do have very soft, bendy nails, then file them when they have product on them because it's going to give them a little bit more structure. They're going to be a little bit less bendy and flexible. This is a rubber base coat, so it's fully flexible anyway, but it still gives it a little bit of strength that my natural nails don't have on their own. So there's one little tip for you. The other thing is basically go with, to be honest, go with what your natural nail wants. Natural nails are kind of like your hair, you know? You can fight it as much as you want, but at the end of the day, your natural hair is what it is. And unless you're going to do extensions or something like that, you're best working with it, whether it's thick or thin, dense, coarse, fine, whatever it might be. You're going to get the best out of it, and natural nails are the same. So for me, I have very bendy nails. I also have, it's probably a bit hard to see on the camera, but I have quite a steep C-curve to my nails. So what that means is as my nails grow out, they like to curl under. They curl to the shape of my nail bed, which is quite rounded. So you can see specifically on this nail, my thumbs are probably the worst for it. I get a lot of curling on the sides. So square nails just simply don't work for me. Tapered square I can get away with for a short time. So if anyone saw my video when I did my vintage nails I had squash I had tapered squares then but my next mani I immediately went back to this sort of shape more rounded or more almond shape because this way as you can see these nails are a few weeks old and I've just left them they are weird shapes I've left that intentionally to do this video um, and as you can see I don't have any curling and that's because I don't have long sharp edges here little corners because if I did, this part here, which as you can see is missing or filed, that would have curled under by now. And that's just the way my natural nails are. I just work with it because basically, unless you cut your free edge off and go with extensions, your nails are going to do what they want to do. So you can do things to help, like, you know, like a rubber base gel or a builder gel. But ultimately, your natural nails are going to do what they want to do. And as you can see, mine grow out in all sorts of weird shapes and directions. Like this nail just... It just grows out like a weirdo. Um, this nail's probably the most normal that I have, but if I turn my hand around this way, so you can see my fingers just dart off in all sorts of weird directions. You know, I'm not 21 anymore. I've had a few injuries to my hands. As you can see, you know, your hands just sort of age, your joints get bigger as you get older, all those kinds of things. So just things to keep in mind when you are filing your nails. So that aside i tend to come in i work from the free edge from the start if you're filing down a lot of product or a lot sorry if you're filing down your nail a lot you can just go in and just sort of blunt file like this and then do your shaping this is the part Aguela, that you could actually do with your e-file and i have done that in the past if i really do want to trim 
my nails right back then I would get an e-file but if you're on your natural nail you really just want something not aggressive something like this bit here so you just want a sanding band this is a fine grit sanding band and as you can see it is quite well loved and that's all I would use if you want to shorten the length of your natural nails if you have an overlay on them you could use something like um, a ceramic bit you could use that as well so but your question was about natural nails so I would use this type of a bit and I would use it in fine if you wanted to use your e-file uh, otherwise just come in with your hand file so to get my rounded shape I literally go one side at a time yes it is a little bit slower but you can get that shape quite easily because you're, you are going that little bit slower you're going one side at a time and you can get yourself that nice shape so if you're going rounded I basically come straight out from my side wall here and then just as you get to the free edge just round your file off nicely just like that if you want something a little bit thinner at the tip if you're going for sort of a round slash almond look then just come in with your e-file on a bit more of an angle and that will give you that that angle there so it comes down to personal preference but for rounded as you can see it really doesn't take very many swipes a 180 grit file is plenty it will do the job and these are the little sort of filey bits that I'm talking about that I come in at the end with a buffer you can use that for that but as you can see you can quite easily shape that nail into what um, yeah the way that you like if you're shortening your nail as I said you could file that down but I like to keep my nails with a little bit of length to them so we'll round this one off a little bit as well because this one's a little bit pointy so I'm not going to do much around my side wall area because I've already got that shape there so what I'm just going to do is come in to my free edge both sides just gently work kind of like an arcing motion with your file you want to do it nice and smoothly no jerky movements and just slowly work your way around the nail you don't need to be aggressive with this if you're using a good quality file it does all the work for you and as I said I do actually have a layer of not there's not much left on it but I do have some rubber base gel on this nail and I'm not applying any pressure here at all okay so this nail we're going to give a slightly more pointy shape so you can see this one we write quite rounded this one just going to come in on that angle that I was talking about before towards the free edge you want to be careful that you don't get too aggressive when you're filing your sidewall area because you will weaken your nail in the stress area so your work really is at the free edge of your nail and then that will give you a slightly more pointed pointed look it really depends on what it is that you are going for so this nail is a little bit almondy so we'll just round that off I'll round off that one as well to make them all a little bit more even so you can see here I've got like here I've got a bit more of an angle coming out here than what I've got on this side as I said my nails do not grow um, evenly by any stretch of the imagination the other thing you want to do is turn your hand around as well so you can see what your nails look like from this side now because my nails dart off sorry not my nails my hands my fingers dart off in weird directions I'm never going to get a nail shape that looks perfect from this view and this view it's just not going to happen for me because from this view my nail my fingers actually look like they're quite straight in reality they're not I'm quite straight here and then my finger darts off to the left that's an old sports injury it is what it is and I can't do much about it so it comes down to how you want to deal with it I personally work on the basis that this is the view that other people see and so I like to shape my nails so that they look as nice as possible from this view so this nail as you can see grows in very strange directions it just does what it likes um, so I'm going to focus more on the right side of my nail because you can see this side sort of facing over this way so what I want to do is angle my nail 
or shape it so that I'm sort of pushing the nail back towards the left there. And you can see already I've got that shape looks better. It looks a little bit less like it's warping to the right. Um, as I said, it's just you kind of have to work with your natural nails. Your, na your nails will do what they want to do. I can see here I've got a little bit of a bulge coming out here. So I'm just going to very lightly and I'm barely touching my nail at this point. Um, because you don't actually have a lot of work to do when you shape your nails, unless you're doing something really quite drastic, unless you're significantly reducing the length of them or going from something like, you know, a stiletto to a short square, you actually don't have that much work to do. It's really about finessing just gentle touches with your file. There's really no need to come in aggressively because if you do that say I come in on this side which I'm not going to do to be honest because <laughs> I do kind of want to keep my nails but if you came in aggressively and just sort of filed like that and then you stop and you file your nail you're going to realize like oh you know you've come in on quite an angle here so it really is about slow to win and just get just finesse it get that shape that you like and as you can see it really doesn't take long to finesse that shape and get your nails so it doesn't look quite so strange. And I've just realized I haven't got my brush here. Sorry about that. Okay, I normally have that on hand with me. So the other thing you can do is come in with your buffing brush. If you have weak nails and you have no product on them, no gel polish, no nail polish, no nothing, um, then you could actually use, or I would be able to with my nails, I would actually be able to use this to shape my nails as well. Don't use a more aggressive file than you need because you're just going to go through your nail um, and probably make them too short or the wrong shape or what have you. So here you can see I've got two nails that are a bit more almondy and two that are a little bit more rounded. Um, I might actually cut these, shorten these a little bit. So we'll go with a more rounded. But I think you sort of get the idea. If you want something a bit more pointy, then just angle your brush. Just be careful. A good rule of thumb is that you can always have your file, your nail file resting against this part, the tip of your finger. If you come in too close to your side wall here and you start filing from this angle, you're going to file a knot right in this part of your nail. And that is absolutely what you don't want to do because you're going to weaken the stress, the stress point of your nail, which is the weakest part of your nail. Because if you're, um, say you're like me, you're a little bit clumsy and you ram your nails into things or you bump them against things. When you do that, you put pressure on your nail and the weakest point is right across here. So that's why things like an apex, if you're doing extensions, are really important because it takes that pressure off that part of your nail. If you have filed too much and you've got a bit of a groove in here, then your nail will just bend right across here. Odds are you're going to break it if you've got thin, weak nails like mine. Either way, you've got significantly weakened nail. So that's not great. So you really just sort of want to file straight out from the sidewall and then the rest of your shaping is done on the free edge only. And as you shorten the length of your nail, um, of course, you might find that you do need to shape a little bit more into your side walls and along the sides as well. So that's why it's really important to start shaping at the free edge of your nail rather than at your side walls, because then you're going to look at it and go, oh, okay, I need to take a little bit more from the sides without taking too much from the sides, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. And I'm just going to come in and just round. And how round you want it, it really depends on the angle of your file. If I come in on this kind of an angle, I'm going to get a more pointy look. If I come in in a more sweeping motion, then I'm going to get a softer look, more more rounded, sort of like a wider round rather than an almond type round, if that makes sense. Okay, so again, if you've got a more pointy nail, just around the free edge, I'm not touching sidewalls here at all. I'm just simply working on that free edge and rounding that off. The other angle, of course, you can look at is underneath your nails as well. 
and as you can see that's just gently rounding the tip of that nail and if I come from this side I get a slightly different view but either way I've evened off that end well not evened it off I've rounded it off so it's not quite so pointy and again it does come down to the shape um, of your nail and your nail bed so depending on the shape of what your cuticle area is you see here I'm actually quite rounded if you look at my thumb it's a lot squarer Okay, so that makes it tricky with the shaping as well because a squarish tape or a tapered square looks really good for my thumbnails because that's thumb yeah um, because that's the shape of my nail bed. My cuticle area is quite squared off, so it's naturally going to if you do a tapered square, it's naturally going to look really quite nice. The rest of my nails are a lot more rounded and therefore a more rounded or uh, almond type shape suits them really well. And you do see some people like do that. They mix up the shape depending on the nail. That's entirely up to you, personal preference. I personally prefer my nails to be the same shape. Now, the other thing that you can do in terms of keeping a hand of the length is if you put your nail file flat and stand your nails up. It's quite tricky for me because my fingers are weird shapes. So what you're looking for is for your nails to be flat along the bottom and your cuticle area to be in as rough a straight line as you can. So if you've got one nail that's particularly longer than the others, you can see there I can take my little fingernail down a little bit more. So the reason this is a good idea is most people, including myself, their nail beds are different lengths. You'll have some nails where your nail bed is longer, others where it's a little bit shorter. So if you file them all looking at the base to look like the same shape, that's all well and good, but if you polish your nails in a colour, say a red or something that's you know not translucent, you're going to end up with some nails that look quite a bit longer than others because when they're polished, all you see is the you know the nail bedder to the length of the nail. You don't see the length of the nail beds, if that makes sense. So when they're a solid colour, it's going to be quite obvious if you've got one nail longer than the other. And so you're basically looking, I don't think I'm explaining myself very well here, I'm sorry. What I'm trying to say is you're looking at the length from the full edge of the cuticle area to the free edge rather than the length of your nail bed separate from the length of the free edge. You need to look at the whole length together because when your nails are alongside each other and a solid colour, that's what you're going to notice. So don't necessarily look at the back and go, oh, okay, that one's shorter than that one. If I hold the two like that, they actually look about the correct length for alongside each other. If I look just by that, I would personally take that nail down a little bit more. Okay, so my little finger needs a little bit more, uh, a little bit less, or a bit more shortening, sorry. And my little finger probably rounds off the best of any of my nails, as you can probably see as I'm working here. But I'm going to keep checking and I'm going to take just a little bit more off. So the nail beds on my little fingers are always shorter than my other nails. And so the nail itself, if I look underneath here, looks longer. But if I look at that at the top of my nail, then the length is actually about correct. Your thumbnails are quite unique. Obviously, they're off on their own. So it's really not that big a deal if they are you know, that little bit longer than the other nails. I file it exactly the same way, but I file my, or I position my thumb. So it's resting on my index finger here. And I position it so that it's facing me like front on like that. And then I will file it exactly the same way as I do the other nails. The only nail that I really compare this to in terms of length, um, and I want to make sure it matches, is my other thumbnail. So as you can see, I've, this one's quite a bit more rounded. I'm not sure which is the better view on the camera. So I need to round this one off a little bit. Um, but in terms of the length, I will compare the two thumbs. I don't really compare my thumb and my fingers because it's not really it, it's not really relevant. I actually quite like my thumbnails to be that little bit longer. 
um, because it doesn't really worry me if they are, you know, I type a lot for my job. I'm typing all day. So it's really important to me that these that these nails are not too long. I'm not catching the wrong keys. My thumbs, they're a little bit longer. <laughs> Great. Why not? And then I will just come in at the end. And I will also go underneath the nail to get rid of any of those catchy catchy bits or loose bits. This is really important, especially if you are going to be um, doing any kind of polish um, after you've done this. So whether it's normal nail polish, gel polish, whatever you use, um, that is very important. So as you can see, my two nails in the middle are probably still a bit more almond shape. That's from my previous, uh, the previous mani that I had. I'm not too worried about that because I am going to put a design of some sort on. And if I keep filing, I'm going to shorten the length too much, which I don't want to do. So they are slightly more um, pointy, but I just sort of wanted to show you the difference on the angle of your file. So if you want more pointy, but as I said, you know, use this side of your... Um, of your <coughs> sorry, that's my dog. <coughs> Sorry, my neighbor dared to walk past. Um, so yes, use the side of your finger to guide so that you don't take too much off your side walls. And then you're just making sure that you are filing that free edge. But that's only if you want something a little bit more pointed. If you want more rounded, then come in and round your file off that way. If you want square, of course, then you would just come in with your file a parallel a parallel to your nail or a 90 degree angle to your nail and you would just file in a backwards and forwards motion and that would square off the edge of your nail and of course you could do the same if you want it on the sides if you wanted to do a more tapered square okay so it really comes down to um the shape i'd go with the shape matching to the na the shape of your cuticle area so it ties in nicely with that. Also keep in mind if your nails do curl, I have a tendency to curl under, then don't go too square because the more square you go, the more they will curl under. You want something that's a little bit more rounded um, if that is what your nails do. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks everyone for watching as always. If you have any questions, then do let me know. Bye.